primary purpose this morning, and that is to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, to exalt Him, to give Him the glory that is due His name, and to make sure that He knows that He's welcome in this place. Most of us feel a little uncomfortable going in a place where we don't feel welcome. And so let's make sure Jesus knows that we all want Him here, that He's welcome in this place. Before we get started with our worship this morning, I want to ask Brother Art Goodhart to come up here. Art, come forth. Brother Art was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ a few weeks ago. I want to give him a certificate. Congratulations. You need to present that at the gates of heaven when you get there and just show it to St. Peter and he'll let you right in, okay? All right, God bless. <laughs> All right, Sister Shelley Kemper is going to be leading us this morning. Come on up, Sister Shelley, and let's all just give our hearts over to worshiping the Lord this morning. The Lord, there we go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo, that's right. Hallelujah. God is good and he's worthy of our praise. I'm thankful for this beautiful day that he's given us today. Well, thank you all for coming out. If you're new, we want to welcome you. Thank you for coming. God is, is good and he's going to do a work in our, our city. He's, he's promised us he will. And we are thankful that he is adding to our church and adding to his church. There's some things that we might do differently than you're used to, and we just want to bring that up front before we get started. We pray out loud because the Bible says they raise their voice to God with one accord. We sing and we rejoice because the Bible says, break forth in song, rejoice and sing praises. We clap our hands because the Bible says, oh, clap your hands, all you people. We raise our hands because the Bible says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. We dance before the Lord because the Bible says, let them praise his name with the dance. We play musical instruments because the Bible says, they played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments. We testify publicly because the Bible says, make known his deeds among the people and talk of his wonderful works. And we anoint with oil and we lay hands on the sick because the Bible says, Is any among you sick? Let them pray over him, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Praise God. Our worship is coming from our hearts because we love God. And we, we love to worship him because he's worthy. He's done so much for us. He has saved us. Many of us came from the world. Many of us came from a, a, a type of church or um, a type of, of worship style that's different from this. But God has taken us from many places, and he's brought us together here. And he has saved us. He's given us his name. And he has um, given us um, his spirit. And we have joy because of his spirit. And we love to worship him and show him and give him the praise and honor that he is due. So join us today and give him that glory. He is worthy of our praise. Let's show him the worship that he deserves. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to read a couple um, before we get started. Psalm 41, 13 says, Bless the Lord God is of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Psalm 103 says, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. 1 Chronicles 16 says, blessed, blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Psalm 90 says, Before the mountains were brought forth or, you, or ever you have formed the earth, and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Let's praise our God today from everlasting to everlasting.
according to everlasting, he is God from before time began until time will go on forever for all of eternity, he is God. And that God who is from everlasting to everlasting, he created each one of us and he loves us with an everlasting love. That's such great news. Praise God. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Um, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer today. We have um, some needs. And I, first of all, I would like to praise God because um, Brother Dave, there he is, wave to us. Brother Dave Thompson is with us today. Praise God. This is his first time back here with us. Um, we've been praying for you every service, brother. If you've been listening online, we pray for you every time. We pray for you throughout our week. He's got cancer, and the Lord's going to heal him. We are trusting that in faith. And we are so thankful that you're here, that you came out to join us today. And the Schraders are here. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Um, Sister Schrader works in a nursing home, and she's been very careful. Um, not to, to bring anything back to, to the people that she serves. So um, we're really glad to see you guys today. The Lord is good. Thank you all for coming. We're glad you're here. Sister, you're feeling better today, Laura. And um, we are just so glad that God is with us and that he hears our prayers, that he is our healer. He is our strength. He is the rock beneath our feet. He is, he is everything that we need. And we can trust him. We can trust him. We can really trust him. We can't trust in people like we can trust in God. God is faithful, and he will never leave us or forsake us. So let's pray this morning. Let's pray for Brother Dave. If you just reach your hand over toward him, um, we don't want to get, you know, all up in his face. But we want to pray that God would heal him, that faith would arise within him to believe that God is going to do a, a miraculous work in him. And let's pray. Um, let's pray for the the pipers that God would continue to strengthen them let's pray as we're praying um the I know we're going to do something later with them but the shrifts this is their last service let's pray for them that God would go with them as they move this week and um this might be the last time you see me up right here for now because I'm moving to uh, Riley's position to play keyboard after this because she's heading off with them and so let's pray for Riley and for Brian and for Michelle and for Pat Pat's going to, well you're not leaving right away but let's pray for her um and let's just pray that God would go with them and help them and be with them, strengthen them. And if you have a need this morning, um, before church, you are welcome to fill out a card and, and put it up here and we'll pray for you. Um, but if you have a need that I don't know about, we have a lot of needs. Let's pray and let's lift them up to the Lord because he hears our prayers and he is here. So let's pray in faith today. Thank you, Lord. God, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us today. We thank you, God, that you have a great work to do in us today. Lord, I pray for Brother Dave Thompson. Lord, I speak healing into his body. I speak, Lord, that this cancer would be removed in the name of Jesus and that healing would flow through his body. Lord, that you would increase faith in him, Lord. God, help him to believe and trust in you, God, that you are good, that you are his healer, that you are his creator, that you give him every breath. Lord, that you have not forsaken him, but you are with him, that you will never leave him, that you love him, God. Help him to know your truth. Help him, Lord, set him free from this, God. Give them victory in the name of Jesus. I speak healing. Oh, God, I speak joy in their minds. I speak for Denise, Lord. I pray that you would give them joy, that you would rise faith within them, Lord, that they would just feel you and know that you're with them know your plan for them oh your plan is good jesus lord i pray for the pipers that you would heal them give them strength god encourage them today in your spirit i thank you god for those of us who have been healed i thank you lord for those that you're gonna heal lord i pray that you would give us strength and health in this church that you would protect us from the enemy that you would protect us from the lies and the deceit of the enemy lord that you would raise us up give us a, a sound mind and lord that we would know your truth give us discernment and wisdom in these days that we would know the truth from the lies lord that we would be about your business that would be we would be bold that we would be courageous in these days that we would go in and go forth and your great your commission will be fulfilled god that carlisle will be saved that every seed in this 
building, Lord, would be filled with people who are seeking you and desiring you, God, that you would do a great work. Lord, I pray for our service today, Lord, that your spirit that's already here would continue to move, move in our worship, move in the giving of the word, move in our altar call today, Lord, and have your way. Be glorified in us, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is good. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us press toward him. In Philippians it says, Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which for Jesus Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting all those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us not live in condemnation. Let us not live in doubt. We've been changed. We've been healed. We've been freed and delivered. we found joy, peace, grace, and favor. Let's press forward. Let's not look back. If our sins have been washed, we can press forward. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus.
the Lord has put on him the sins of us all. And in the waters of baptism, we receive a clean slate. We don't have to live in our past. We don't have to live in guilt or shame. We can live in liberty and freedom. The Lord has taken our sins and he has washed us and cleansed us. Let's look forward. Let's not live in the past. Let's not live by guilt or shame. Let's live in victory. God wants us to have victory. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is our new song we, we just sang on Sunday night. Let's get our clap, clapping hands out. Clap throughout the song. Worship, dance, jump around.
God. He's worthy of our praises. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, O oh God. We praise you, Lord. Lord, you are worthy. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your goodness and mercy, God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we welcome everyone here this morning. We welcome the presence of the Lord. Please don't rush off at the end of the service. We're going to, we have some special activities and encourage you to stay for that. Um, won't be real long, but I uh, want everybody to stay. Um, it is my very uh, distinct honor and privilege to introduce our speaker tonight. He has many claims to fame. Uh, he's, first of all, a graduate from the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. He uh, married my middle daughter. <coughs> he's So he is the father of three of the most important people in the world to me. He is also the grandfather of my only great grandson. And so that's pretty special. And uh, appreciate him and all those he has produced and brought into this world. Uh, really, it's, it's wonderful there. They are, uh, the Strites are just wonderful people. I've often thought I wish my daughter could have be my mom because she was a really good mom. And so, of course, she wants to be my granddaughter because we take our grandchildren on special trips, but not our children. But <clears throat> I don't know how that would all work out. But uh, anyway, I want to introduce Brother Doug Strite. He is on the staff, the ministerial staff at Bible World Apostolic Church in Chesapeake, Virginia. And uh, we are privileged to have him, Brother Doug, come and preach the word to us. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we thank you, Lord. We give you glory and honor, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> it is certainly uh, an honor to be here. And of all the introductions that I've had, I would say that that one by far was the most recent. <laughs> but it certainly is an honor to be here with Pastor Houston, Pastor Epler. Um, it's great to see Brother Peterson and uh, the Horns and also Brother Kemper. Sister Kemper, awesome job with the worship service. I love your intro to the worship service. And you have some great folks here, great leadership and great saints of God. This is an awesome church family. Amen. Let's put our hands together for our church here. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And you may be seated. And um, this is my first time in a service in the new sanctuary here. And you all have done a, far, uh, a marvelous job. This is awesome. I love this sanctuary. I love that Jesus is front and center. Right there. And easy access baptistry. That's awesome. And um, the music, the drums look like they're awesome. I like the, what is it, the child, is it a, a nursery with the, so they, people can watch the service. I even like the raised roof. This is great. It's like, you know, um, there used to be a song about, you know, like, like um, a room without a roof. I guess that's so that you can jump and shout. So anyway, you know what? All this tells me that a lot of care and detail, a lot of attention to detail has gone into the building of this church and this facility here. And it tells me a lot about the leadership of this church and the, the um, care with which they are taking care of the flock of God. And I believe that you have a doting pastoral staff here who takes care of the flock. Amen? And it is certainly good to be here. Wow, what a year this has been. 2020 is going to go down into the history books. I don't think we're going to ever forget this year. We had a hurricane come up the other day. And you know it says something about the year that you're having when they announce that a hurricane is coming and everybody's like, meh. You know, there was not a big run on every. I guess we already had all the toilet paper we needed. So, and an election year at that. I remember hearing a story about the 2000 election, and, you know, you remember Joe Lieberman? Anybody remember Joe Lieberman? He was on the ticket for vice president, and after his disappointing loss, he went home to a consoling wife who consoled him and said, don't worry, she said, in this house you will always be vice president. <laughs> oh, boy. So um, I'm going to talk, and, and I also appreciate the clock on the back. That is really big. <laughs> so I think that's a message for me before I even start my message to you. And I promise you, if it gets much past one or two, I'll be aware. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about back to normal. And if you could turn in your scriptures to John chapter 16 and verse 7. Or if you don't have your, your book with you or an electronic Bible with you, I believe it's up on the screen. John 16 and 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Sometimes it's better for us that things change. Even though at the time it's not our preference or our choice, and we may not see how much better it's going to be. Can we close our eyes and ask the Lord to help us right now in Jesus' name? Lord, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for this time together, for the wonderful worship, for the faith, 
for the inspiration, Lord, for all of your saints here, for this church family, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this time we can spend together. We dedicate this time to you, ask that you would bless it and that you will use it, that you will change our lives. And we thank you humbly. We love you. We give you our hearts today in Jesus' name. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Brother Art, you just joined an awesome church family here. You know, the Bible says it's like a, uh, it's like these bricks out here that are put one next to another to build this building. And the Lord brings and he brings bricks in. I'm not calling you a brick. I'm just saying you have a contribution to make here and you're the latest gift to this church, making it a church family. Amen, and congratulations on your baptism. Sometimes, uh, you know, well, let me ask you this question. Anybody really enjoying this pandemic? Sort of. <laughs> so, uh, so there may be some outliers here, but, you know, most people, you feel like, wow, I've been waiting for this to happen, you know, all my life. I, I've been waiting for this to come along. This is great. I'm in my element, and, and I just love change. And I love uncertainty and also isolation. Now, I know that there are some people who enjoy more isolation than others, but I'm doing just fine. This pandemic is great for me. I don't want to ask to raise hands because there might be a few who are really enjoying themselves. In Virginia, we are, uh, I think it's a little bit different what's going on in Virginia right now, but we're under some quarantine rules and there's some laws on the books and there's things that we're trying to uh, and my wife and I while we're here we're trying to abide by the spirit of the laws and things that are going on in Virginia so forgive us if we're not reaching out to shake hands or hugging your neck and uh, we we will do that I don't have any problem doing that but we're we've been trying to get conditioned to be you know following the spirit of the laws down there in Virginia so um, but but we're teleworking a lot of people are teleworking and I've been teleworking. Many employers are employing liberal telework. And so this is all, and, and then, you know, the businesses, not all the businesses are up 100%. There's just a lot going on. I, I read recently someone said, I did a load of pajamas so I can have clean work clothes this week. And there are some people who are asking, you know, for the second part of the quarantine, can we switch families to quarantine with asking for a friend you know but I can't tell you how many times that I have thought to myself I can't wait until things get back to normal and I catch myself and I I, I don't think I've actually said it now I may have my wife could probably tell me if I've said it it's probably been around her but most of the time I've been catching myself and not speaking it because I'm not really sure that that's what I want. I have this crazy idea that what you say matters. And what you speak is powerful. And you can set things in motion by the words that you speak. So I try to speak things that can have the potential of changing my heart or my attitude. I try to only speak those things that I know are going to help me, you know, to, to pursue and to gain and to fulfill those things that I believe are the will of God for my life. Um, I had a misunderstanding recently with a, an important person in my life. And you do know that there are people who are important. I mean, if you, we're all children of God and we're all important in his sight. He died for every one of us. And if we see a uh, hurting person on the roadside, we're not going to just pass by because they're not important. Everybody is important in that regard. But the Lord put us in families. And right there means that there's some important people for me. God designed people, people that are important to me. God put us in spiritual families, in churches. The Bible designed church families Groups of people with pastors, important people, brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know, the, the Bible really kind of spells out who all of these important people are. And they're important because of the role that they fill in my life. 
Everybody's important to God. But there are some people that God has brought into my life who are important to me, and my relationship with them is very important to me. And sometimes it's the value that you place on those important people that help you to speak the things that need to be spoken and to do the things that need to be done so that those relationships can be maximized. And this was an important person in my life, a spiritual mentor and a leader, and it was a real misunderstanding because I had not violated his trust in any way that I could have even changed, really, and I felt misunderstood because the way my actions came across to him was hurtful. But I didn't feel like I should defend myself Um, And I remember feeling, you know, we got in a conversation about it, and uh, I felt like, you know, the problem here is that you don't trust me. And I felt like he's never going to trust me. I just felt a little bit of despair that, you know, this this important person, you know, how, how can this be that I have, you know, held this person up, and I'm in this relationship, and yet I don't believe that he's ever going to trust me. And I decided in that moment to speak counter to how I was feeling, and probably more in line with the actual truth, more accurate to say. Um, And it's certainly what I wanted to be so, and what was in the best interest of everybody. And I said, well, I know that you trust me because of this and that, and I named a couple things. And I said, and I know that my words and actions are important to you, or you wouldn't be upset right now. And I'll just tell you what could have spiraled into a hurtful conversation and a harm done to an important person in my life uh, began to take a turn. And after departing, I received a text from another minister who was there, and they began to say that their respect for me went through the roof. I was just trying to survive in that conversation, to be honest. And while I felt this, you know, I felt this, uh, this feeling, you're never going to trust me, um, I felt like it was the Lord that said, you need to speak faith into this conversation. You may not feel it right now. But you need to speak about what you know to be true by some of the facts that are on the on the table. And I believe that it was the Lord. And so uh, this minister, um, he went on to encourage me because honestly, I was still feeling a little misunderstood and untrusted and discouraged. But uh, because of what he said, because of what was said in that conversation, the net result of that was that trust was increased relationship was strengthened and what we say can change the trajectory of our lives amen now this was a vivid example for me of how words can change outcomes and that the things we give voice to can actually set things in motion and if those things are not the things we want if they're not the things that are best if they're not the things that the lord wants then why would we give voice to them So I I catch myself because I start to feel like I can't wait till it gets back to normal. And although I felt this desire to get back to normal, I haven't spoken it because I'm convinced. I'm not convinced that it is what I need to be doing, going back to what I think is normal. But when I think about this, I have to ask myself, and I have asked myself, well, what really is normal? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe if I can understand what the biblical perspective on normal is. So buckle your seatbelts, because you know what's coming. Bibles, the Bible, <laughs> what's normal in the Bible isn't what, is what our experience of normal is in, in you know, a lot of our life, necessarily. So here are some of the things that I believe are normal in the Word of God. Number one, I believe that God is always setting things up for His next big change. And that He's always setting things up for His end game, which is Jesus Christ 
The Bible says he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. The Lord knows the end from the beginning, and he called it out in the beginning. And then all of this that's been going on is just setting things up for Jesus Christ, who 2,000 years ago was slain for us. And then the rest of the end game is the bride of Christ coming to be with the Lord. And so that is the end game that I believe he is always pursuing. What's normal in the word of God is that God is setting things in motion for his end game. To bring his bride to be with him. And we need to be certain about this thing. That it is going to happen. And uh, the things are going to happen in this world that are going to make it happen. This is normal. Number two, I believe in the Bible, what is normal is that disruption in the word of God always leads to opportunity for something new in our relationship with God. Disruption leads to opportunity. Well, that's not the way we feel about it, is it? We start feeling miserable about disruption and we want to go back to normal. And yet the Lord, in the word of God, disruption leads to one thing. And that is something different and better in our relationship with him. I've been praying that God would send us a married couple for some time. So it didn't surprise me when we got a text a few months ago, I believe it was. And um, this young lady who had come to our church a few times, she actually had a Pentecostal background, but had not been walking with God for some time, has gotten, gotten married, we have a new baby, and uh, she and her husband are feeling hungry for the Lord, and so they reached out to my wife, and, it, and I told them then, it doesn't surprise me, we've been praying, we've been praying that the Lord would bring us a couple. You know, it's always a miracle when the Lord does a work in a couple, two individual people who he brings along and does a work in their lives together. I am always amazed and so thankful for what he does. So anyway, we've been teaching, uh, going through scriptures with them, and I just recently taught about the progression of man's relationship with God. And, you know, Adam and Eve, they instituted some disruption in the garden. You know, it wasn't God's doing, it was their doing. But it was disruption nonetheless. But, you know... The Lord was the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, even before Adam and Eve. In the mind of God, he was going to become a man and was going to die for Adam and Eve and for everybody else after. The Lord had already worked this into his plan. He didn't make them sin, but he knew they were going to sin. And he had a plan already in place to turn that disruption into something good. The first sacrifice happened because of that disruption. And although they had clothed themselves with leaves, the Lord made the first sacrifice and he killed an animal and clothed them with coats of skin. Amen. That was the first sacrifice to cover the sin of man. It allowed for the grace of God to be extended because it was always God's plan. And so that disruption provided an opportunity to grow in the love of God. Man's rebellion in the flood. Now, that was a disruption, I would say. We haven't seen a disruption of that kind of biblical proportions quite yet. And in fact, the rebellion and the flood led to the establishing of the rainbow, along with a promise that it wouldn't happen like that again. Abraham's calling led to the establishment of God's people. Abraham left. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that all happened because Abraham was willing to look in the face of uncertainty. He left what was familiar, and by that, there was a sacrifice that the Lord provided in the place of Isaac. There was justification by faith. The promise, the children of promise, the blessing of Abraham, we are able to partake of the blessing of Abraham when we're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
And so God did those things in the midst of disruption of Abraham following the calling of God and leaving what was familiar in order to have a new opportunity or a new normal. The time of the prophets, all the struggle of Israel and the world, you know, it led to the Messiah and the New Testament. And the New Testament is our new relationship with God a new opportunity in our relationship. I've taught many years, you know, some people believe, and you can read some things in the Old Testament, and you feel like there's a different God. There's a God of judgment in the Old Testament, a God of mercy in the New, but in all reality, and as you get to know Him better and know the Word of God better, it just isn't true. There is no different God, and He didn't change. He didn't just all of a sudden change. In fact, it's the very same God But our relationship with God has changed over the years, and it's gotten better. And so, um, you know, the Bible indicates that there will be disruption that is associated with Jesus' return. And that just like all the other disruption, that change is going to be an opportunity for a better relationship with him. Number three, disruption in the Bible. I believe that disruption is designed to lead us to the gospel and to Jesus Christ. People are lost without Jesus. We're lost. Uh, this is normal in the word of God. Now, you know, <laughs> it took me a while for this to sink in that my frail weak, and, um, y- you know, I'm just prone to not be 100% successful in almost anything. And, and when I was a younger, more of a perfectionist kind of a personality, <laughs> it really, really, really bugged me. And I thought that I could get to the point where that wasn't the case. And the Lord, you know, he very patient with me, but continually r- reminded me, and, you know, that I'm in flesh. I, I'm going to be living in flesh. I'm, I, I'm not a spirit, and I'm not God. And so what is flesh? Flesh is weak and, and needful. And so um, it's not just people that are lost out there that need Jesus. I need Jesus. And he's going to remind us, you and me, he's going to continue to remind us that we need him. We need him near to us. We need his strength. We need to learn how to lean on him. We need him to lead us. We need him to guide us. We are very needful. This is normal in the word of God. When we stop beating ourselves up for the fact that we're flesh, there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It doesn't say that I'm a perfect man, but it does say that I'm walking after something. I'm going after something. The answers will not come from money. The answers aren't going to come from a bailout, not from government, not from civic organizations. This world is never going to be heaven. There's a reason this is called earth. And there's a reason something else is called heaven. And we're not there yet. We aren't in heaven, and if you want the answer to why bad things happen, why do things happen we don't understand, why do good people get sick, why do babies, innocent babies, not make it past infancy, uh, I'll tell you, we're not in heaven. And it's never going to be heaven. There will always be a part of us that longs and looks for heaven. We're looking for it, and we're going to be there I'm intended on being there, but this isn't it. Who told you this was supposed to be heaven? Number four, I would say, of what is normal in the Bible is that there will be a longing in our hearts. Psalm 119, 81 said, My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. 1 Timothy 4.10, for to this end we toil and strive because 
we have our hope set on the living God who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. There's a difference between longing and hope. Longing is a noun, an earnest and deep desire or yearning. I believe that we all experience longing. And there's things right now in this sanctuary, there's things that we long for that we cannot produce on our own that we need God to do for us. I, if I took a poll and everybody was honest, I believe that every hand would be raised, that there's a longing in our heart for something that we cannot do in our life by ourselves without something divine, without God. Hope, on the other hand, it's a noun, and it is the belief or expectation that something wished for will happen. It's also a verb to want something to happen with a sense of expectation that it will. There's a longing in every one of us. And when we mix that longing with expectation, then it becomes hope. Something inside of us says, yes, this is going to happen. I can't wait until it happens. I want it to happen, and I'm going to look for it to happen, but I believe it's going to happen. You hear what I'm saying? We're waiting for the Lord after all. What are we doing? You know, what are we doing all of this for? What are we, why are we living in this world as children of God? And we're believers. We're believers in the book. We're believers in the word of God. We're believers in God. He said he's coming back again. He's coming back to get us, to take us out of this world. He's coming back to set up his kingdom that's going to reign forever. The throne of David will last forever and ever. That's what we're waiting for. I can't wait until he comes back again. We're looking for him. In Isaiah 40, 31, it says, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Why is that? Because hope is a life giver. It feeds us. It lifts us. It keeps us going. It helps us put one foot in front of the other. It puts something inside of us that, you know, it... It's one thing to want. It's one thing to long. It's another thing to have this certain expectation it's going to happen. It is going to happen. If I can just keep going one more day, it's going to happen. If I can put one more foot in front of the other foot, it's going to happen. It may not happen today, but it is going to happen. Job said, when will my change come? You know, Job went through some things. And he asked that question, not knowing, you know, I believe that Job, everything leading up to that leads me to believe he knew that it was going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to be from the Lord. I know that I need this change to happen. I just don't know when. Let me tell you about what's normal in the Bible. We don't all go through what Job went through. He went through a very extreme circumstance that probably none of us will ever even approach to. But we can all relate to that longing that he had when he shouted out to God, when will my change come? When is this going to happen for me? When is this change going to happen that I need, that I keep seeking you for? But I believe it's going to happen. I just don't know when. I believe in you, God. Normal is overrated. What we consider normal, I believe, is overrated. And for all those longing to go back to normal, I'll just tell you, I'm looking for something to go on to, like the song that we sang earlier. I'm looking to go forward. I'm really not looking to go backward. I'm looking forward to something that is better in the future than what I had a few months ago. Looking for something new and better. How things will be, not how things were. 
And I also believe that if we were all honest, that you could, you know, rewind six months. Something that was normal, that you didn't like about your relationship with God. That you don't really want to go back to. Now's the time. Now is the time to acknowledge, Lord, you bring disruption. It's for one reason. It's for us to have a better relationship with you, to lead us to Jesus Christ, to be ready for that day that you're coming back for your bride. What do I need to do to go forward from here? I'm looking for the heaven, honestly, if I look beyond, you know, the next few months, I don't know how long it's going to be until Jesus comes back again. But I'll tell you that I am looking beyond. Uh, I'm looking for the heaven that this earth is never going to be. And it's okay to look for that. I can't wait for Jesus to come back again. But until he comes in the clouds, I still need to see his face right now. I need a new normal in my life. I need to be closer to him. I need to set, you know, when trial and tribulation comes, it's time to look to Jesus. There's a big transition in happening in this church. It's time to look to Jesus. It's the reason for the transition. When, when Peter was out of the boat, what did he do? He started looking at the waves and he started to sink. But when he looked at Jesus and beheld his face and reached out to him, then he began to be raised up. We need to look to Jesus. Romans 8, 19 says, For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. 2 Peter 3, 13. I'm just going to read some scriptures to you about this longing and about this desire that we have. 2 Peter 3, 13. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Romans 8, 23, and not only this, but we also, we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. 1 Thessalonians 1, 10, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Titus 2, 13, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1, 7, so that you're not lacking in any gift, waiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jude 1 and 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. 2 Peter 3, 12, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be destroyed and burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. Luke 12, 36, be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Galatians 5, 5, for we through the spirit by faith are waiting for the hope of righteousness. A little bit of longing that I can sense there in the word of God, a little bit of waiting expectantly, eagerly looking for hastening I'll tell you how we hasten the coming of Jesus. One is by saying, come, Lord Jesus. Revelations, it said that the church, the bride says, come. One is speaking it, I believe. Lord, I'm ready for you to come. I'm ready for that change. Come, Lord Jesus. Do we really want that? Or are we hanging on to this world? The world's going to pass away, the Bible says. Don't love. The only reason why we're not to love everything around us is because whatever we love and whatever we're clinging to is what we're going to get. If you're loving and clinging to this world, that's what you're going to get, and it's going away. Let's love and cling to something that is eternal, that's longer lasting, that we can keep eternally, that we'll be with eternally, and when this world goes away, we'll be with the one we love. 
I don't want to go back to normal. I don't want to go back at all. I want a new normal in my life. If I go back to anything, maybe it would be this in Revelations where he says, Thou hast left thy first love, remember therefore. If I go back, maybe I can go back to this. Remember my first love, how much I needed Jesus Christ. Remember how I learned how to pray and to get into his presence. Remember how I learned how to worship him and to lift my hands. I, I'm not that old that I can't remember before I even had the liberty to be able to lift my hands and worship God. Remember how I longed to be close to him. Remember when it was all about him and, and a relationship with him. Remembering that joy, the urgency, the pursuit, the sense of God's presence, the nearness of his presence that we felt. Can we just close our eyes for a moment? Do you remember that first love? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. If we go back to anything, Lord, let us go back to something that we've lost. But Lord, let us not be satisfied with what's in the past. Let us go forward to something better in our relationship with you. And Lord, I'm asking that you will talk to every heart in this place what it is that they can do to make that relationship better with you beginning today in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. I joked about being long, but I'm really not going to be long if the, if I um, think that there's a musician who can come and we're going to go to an altar service. I'm inviting you today. Actually, right now, <coughs> I'm going to invite you to turn this disruption that we're experiencing in our world today into an opportunity to be closer to Jesus, not just today, but until he comes back again. And that we can hasten his return. And that we can do that through the things that we speak and the things that we do. Amen. If you could... Right where you are, I would like to turn this whole sanctuary into an altar. If you could stand with me. And I would like to turn our attention, you know, to Jesus Christ. Spend just a few minutes and uh, just kind of put everybody else out of your mind and out of your thinking and turn your attention to Jesus Christ. The presence of God has been in this place in a mighty way. I have sensed his presence from the very first time I came in through the worship service and fellowship and everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus, we long for you. We long for you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we need you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. You know, um, not only is there a, a big disruption in the world, there's a transition that's happening in this church body, and that can, be, that can feel kind of disruptive. I, I would like to ask all of the, the elders, the pastors and the deacons, if you could come down. Um, 
kind of spread out around up here across the front. You know, it's not a small thing to build a, a structure like this. We oftentimes talk about, well, the, the church is not the structure. The church is the people. And that is absolutely true. You know, you are the church. We are the church body. It's, it's really the people and the relationships that make up the church. But a building like this is significant, and it's not just symbolic. I think of it like everybody, everybody knows the image of that flag that was going up on Iwo Jima when we raised the flag at the top of the mountain and we said, this piece of land is ours. Now there was still some fighting to do. It wasn't a done deal yet, but we were staking a claim and letting everybody know we're lifting up a flag right here so that everybody can see this is your property. This is our property. We own it now, and, and you're not getting it back. And I believe what's happened here in Carlisle is a flag has been raised and this territory has been claimed. It's not just symbolic. There's something substantial that's happening right here, right now in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So there's still some fighting to do, and I'm going to ask you right now, the, the, um, the elders, if you could lift your hands, if you could raise your hands and begin to pray for these men, uh, that, the, that God will protect them and keep them in this battle, that he will guard their hearts and minds, that he'll give them wisdom beyond their years, that he'll give them the answers that they need to keep this flag up, to keep this banner raised in Carlisle, and to move it all forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up these men to you, Lord Jesus. Lift them up, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Buoy them up, Lord Jesus. Renew them in their strength right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Renew them with your strength, Lord. Inspire them, I pray, right now in Jesus' name. Inspire them for the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Breathe your breath into them, I pray. Give them wisdom, Lord. Give them ability, Lord. Let them know what this flock needs, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. You're the shepherd, Lord. These are the under shepherds, Lord. Feed them, I pray, that they will feed your people in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now what I would like to ask you to do, um, Carlisle Christian Fellowship, this church family, everybody who feels comfortable, and by all means, if you're not comfortable coming down and being around the front, that is completely fine. I'm not sure what your custom is exactly here, but I'm inviting you to all come down. Everybody who's comfortable coming down to the front, we're having a little family gathering here at the altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What a presence of God has been in this place all day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to lift him up. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we love you. We give you glory and honor, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus' name. And uh, now what I would like to ask is uh, if we can continue to pray and to worship the Lord, and you know what the Lord has spoken to you that you want to go forward to and not go back to. And you know what the Lord has already spoken to your heart. I'm going to ask these elders to, to, um, to just make their way through this altar and to lay hands. It doesn't have to be a long time, but just to lay hands and to pray for every person at this altar and then throughout the congregation. If, if you could just go ahead and begin to lay hands on, our, on, on folks and pray for them. Let's continue to pray together for a few moments here. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, let these men of God minister to you. But when their hand touches you, I believe that the Lord is touching you. It's, it's their hand that he's using. But the Lord is going to touch you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to reassure you. He's going to give you confidence. There's no magic here. This is just the way the Bible says it happens. The laying on of hands. Something's going to be transferred to you when they lay hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we love you, Lord God. We give you glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise belongs to you, Lord. All praise belongs to you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to you, Lord Jesus. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we want to go forward, Lord. Don't let us go back to normal, I pray. Let us go on to something better, I pray, right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, this longing in our heart. We want more of you, Lord. We want to be close to you, Lord Jesus. We want to sense your presence, Lord. We want to know you're real in this circumstance, in that situation. We want to put it all in your hands. We want to see your answer, Lord, not my answer, not somebody else's answer. I pray that you would show us your answer, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right here, right now. Hallelujah. Tell them what you really want. Right here, right now. Tell them what you really need. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speak it out. Tell them what's important to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Let that be our prayer today. continue to reach out for a few more moments asking for that peace of God. That peace of God is in this place, but he wants to settle on us right now. 